so many leaked images, teasers. It was like we already knew what the venue facelift is going to be all about. And one thing was very clear, where the old car was a bit bland, yet a safe buy in the sub 4 meter SUV category, with the new one, Hyundai is trying to spice things up. So in this video, after experiencing this car for the whole day, we'll try to answer 9 key questions about it. So let's get started. The biggest and the most polarizing change on the outside is the front design. And that's because of the grille. When I first saw the images of the Hyundai Venue facelift, I felt that the grille was a bit too in your face and shiny. But now that I see it in person, the good thing is Hyundai has not used shiny but dark chrome over here because of which it doesn't look too loud. Not only that, it also gives this car a lot more presence as compared to the old car. Other changes up front, you get a new bumper and because of the design, the car actually looks wider than it actually is. Now the headlamp design hasn't changed, but what has changed are the internals. Instead of halogen, now you get LED projectors. Now this is a bit interesting and also a bit subjective in my eyes. The old venue used to remind me of the Volkswagen Polo, especially because of the tail lamp design. And now with the revised layout, it reminds me of the Volkswagen Tiguan, doesn't it? But other than that, the design itself looks different and distinctive. Especially the connected lamp design gives the venue's rear a sense of sophistication that the old car never had. From the side, the venue remains almost identical, except you get new design 16-inch alloy wheels, which look a lot sportier as compared to the old car. In terms of color options, you get six. But our choice, especially if you want a sporty looking venue, will be the red. And also in the top end variant, you can opt for a contrasting black roof, which adds a bit of jazz to the overall design. As compared to the outside, on the inside, the venue remains unchanged. So the dash layout is simple, which might not be to everyone's taste, but it does look classy. And in fact, the quality and fit and finish is right up there with the very best in the segment. Yes, the interior ambience has changed slightly, so has the sense of space. That's thanks to Hyundai using, instead of all black cabin, a dual tone finish where you get black and beige interiors, because of which the cabin feels a bit more airy. In terms of upholstery, you still don't get full leather seats. Instead, you get a mix of leather on the bolsters and fabric on the main seat. But the seat itself is quite comfortable, you get good side support. On the driver's seat, you also get power adjustment for recline and seat length. But unfortunately, seat height adjust is still manual. Rear seat experience too has improved slightly where the seat now provides you better under thigh support. You also get adjustable backrest, which will be useful on long journeys, especially if you want to recline and relax. In terms of space, you have more than enough headroom. Knee room is still tight. It has improved as compared to before, especially because of the scooped out front seats. You have more knee room. But even now, it is not the most spacious car in its segment. In terms of convenience features, you get a central armrest with two cup holders. You also now get two Type-C charging ports instead of just one 12 volt socket in the old car. Other than that, what would have improved? The overall experience in the back seat is maybe a sun blind. The Hyundai Venue was always a practical car and it still is. You get loads and loads of storage spaces. But one thing is improved, where in the old car, one cup holder space used to be taken up by a air purifier. Now the air purifier is neatly integrated under the front armrest because of which now you get two cup holders up front. The boot space on the other hand remains unchanged. At 350 litres, it is not the biggest in the segment. But the loading bay is deep, which makes packing even large items easy. You also get 60-40 split folding rear seats for added practicality.
So with the facelift menu, you get a brand new infotainment system. The size is the same at 8 inches and as compared to some of the cars in this segment, it does feel a little small. But the graphics and the screen is crisp and very easy to use. With the system, you can also choose your preferred language. One more good thing that Hyundai has done are the voice commands which previously were dependent on the network. But now, they're on board in the system because of which response times are much quicker. Open sunroof. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So you have to carry your phone cable despite getting a wireless phone charger. Funnily, the low variants get wireless phone mirroring, but no wireless charger. Weird. Another new addition is the digital driver's display. It has a funky layout and in the center you get vital info like tire pressures and a comprehensive trip computer. Although the venue's features list is quite comprehensive, it could have got a bit more wow features. The features that we really missed on the new venue included ventilated seats, auto day-night IRVM, branded sound system and automatic wipers. In terms of safety, obviously this is the top in variant. You get six airbags, ESP, uh, traction control and all the goods. But the good thing is right from the second variant, you get things like ESP and traction control. Yes, unfortunately, six airbags is limited only to the top end SX option variant. They should have offered at least four airbags in the low variants for sure. So with the new venue, you get the same engine options, two petrols, one diesel, same transmission options as before. So we are driving the DCT transmission and this is where the change is. Where this transmission now feels a lot smoother as compared to the old one, uh, especially in stop-go traffic. Other than that, the engine as well feels a little more refined as compared to the old car. But otherwise, the driving experience remains exactly the same. The power figures are the same. In terms of outright power, it doesn't really feel rapid, uh, but it does feel effortless, especially while cruising or to make quick overtakes. With the DCT transmission, now you also get drive modes. It doesn't really alter the engine maps. What it does is it alters the gearbox map, where in eco mode, it holds on to a higher gear even when you go hard on the throttle, while in normal or in sport mode, it becomes a lot more alert. In terms of suspension setup, it remains unchanged where you get the same ride which is not too soft and not too stiff. In fact, it is quite a comfortable ride. The suspension too works silently. So doing long drives as well in this car is comfortable. What could have improved definitely is sound insulation where you get quite a bit of road noise, tire noise and wind noise through the A pillars. So is the venue fun to drive? It is the same as before, you get the same amount of power. The gearbox has improved, so yes, a bit of fun quotient has improved. Uh, but in terms of handling, it is not exactly a sporty handler, but it does go through corners really well with confidence. So yes, you can have a bit of fun with the venue. In some regards, we were expecting a bit more from the Venue facelift. We wish it had a bit more wow features and overall the driving experience remains identical to the old car, especially when it comes to ride handling or even sound insulation. So overall, just like before, the Venue remains a safe choice in its segment. But the improvements that they have done in terms of features and also the exterior changes that they have done, it makes this car a lot more desirable as compared to the old car. And then there are its strong points like its easy to drive nature, the strong engines and the comfortable seating makes it a great overall package.